Here we are inside our register.php, which is nested within a scripts directory below user registration in the website interactivity. And we'll discuss what we do here. Now, the first thing we have to take note of is the fact that we adjust the headers again. We make sure that this file is going to think that it is something from the past. It's not going to be cached. And this is what I normally do. If you can take a look, make sure it expires some date way in the past. The last modified date is something in the past as well. And you can see here that the cache control, for example, this is also going to serve to make sure that this is not going to be cached. This is for HTTP 1.1 and you can see the 1.0 that's also here as well. And you can use that as is or use a, another example, use another example of that header information. You can check that out at php.net and there are variations to using that, but that's going to send the headers and make sure things aren't cached. Now we know when we use sessions, we have to use session start. This is like the indicator that says if you want to use session variables, you have to just call that, just set things up. It doesn't start the session necessarily, but it starts the session for this page or just gains access to the variables that you might have set on another page so we can share them among pages. Now, furthermore, after we do that, we are using the is set check. Now, if this session variable isn't set because I have session variables that I like to set, we've seen this already. Now, if it isn't set, that means that the session wasn't included yet. So we have to require it once. We can also just do require once. We only want to use this if this variable wasn't set. So this variable is set in that page, this session init.php, and it is also a PHP file. So you can't see this from the client. You can't see the code inside. And that is going back dot, 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 dot to go to the root and session init. And that's so you can't see it from the browser dot inc files can be read by anybody and that's normally for javascript anything that's client side php is going to shield the user from seeing this as straight server code so if that was set and it's set down here that means that we're going to initialize things that's initializing for the client now we don't necessarily want to do this again and again because it's going to overwrite anything that we have set after we start using this so that's why we check is set and make sure that that wasn't set. And that's the information behind that. And we do that here as well as in our register. So we're actually looking at the register. This is the file we want to actually work with, but you can see that that is the same thing that's set in the user registration or any page that we want to control and manipulate the session or just read the session. That's what we need to do. Okay. So now what we do is require session functions. We'll take a peek at that as well. And that's just going to store, as I've mentioned, all the fields that we actually want to pass in that form. This is mentioned in the form section. Now we add these field names. These are the actual parameters that we can pass from forms, the form fields, and we can use them and manipulate them. So this is going to be posted or in the get, and this is going to allow us to process this. But we can only have these in here because these are the ones we want to actually use. And this will eliminate any problems as far as the wrong variables being passed in there. We can ensure that we're only dealing with those variables and anything extra that's in the form or processed in the header or what have you, or coming from another page, for example, isn't going to actually be processed. That's good. So continuing from there with that array, we also reset the post just in case one of these require file starts to use the post for some reason. So we reset that like any other array. And then we use a while loop like we've seen many times. And then we're going to go through each post variable there. And we're going to see if anything is a value of nothing, we're going to set it to null because the databases can have null values depending on the field types that we specify. But we want to put something in as null or blank, it depends. Oftentimes null is better than just the empty string because it gives us the database value set specifically to null and that can come in handy. It's like is set and unset and checking for nulls here in PHP, but on the database side. So we're going to pass a string 
in our SQL string that's going to appear to be a null to the database. And then we're going to do some SQL injection type protection schemes here where we use the get magic quotes and then we're going to use the add slashes to escape things. Now what this does is it will check to see if the magic quotes option is on for PHP and if it is it's going to eliminate the fact that some users could put in a single quote or double quote and mess up your SQL statements to the point that they actually can inject other SQL statements inside there in a pretty sneaky way. So this is going to check to make sure that's set on get magic quotes, make sure it's set on. You can look this up to get more information on that, but there's a lot of code out there, especially php.net. You can see a lot of detail and users have written in about this and how to actually solve this problem. So what we're doing is we're just protecting it. We're taking each of our AR vowels here for that array and we're making sure that if the quote option isn't on, we're just going to grab the vowel there. This allows us to add slashes if the get magic quotes underscore GPC is actually set. And that's very important to deal with that SQL injection and having other people mess with your queries and things like that, or just having invalid data mess up the query to cause errors. So here we have a continuation here now. If the value here, which is the value of that key value pair from the post, if it's null, because it can be null, because we've set that there if it's blank, we want to actually set the session key to null. Otherwise we want to set that to the value. We don't want to pass null in a string because that's going to then go back to the form if we should have to go back to the form. And that's dealing with this session. We want to make sure we put something in there that's a value or just make it null. Don't give it a value. And that's important. If you play around with that by taking this part out, you'll see that if you have to go back to the form, it's going to process it in the wrong way. And then we just do some things here to check to see if the access period and the password aren't a part of that key. They're not one of those values. They can't be either of those values. And if they are, then we're going to ignore this. But we want to add quotes around everything else because everything else is just a string. The access period is the only thing that actually isn't a string. And the password itself, we don't want to modify that because we're going to do something special to the password. And then I have some debugging information here. If you can go up to the top here and see that you can turn this debug on and off, false and true. You can put debug code in your file here that if you're just testing things, you can set that to true and then it'll echo out information because it knows that you want to debug that page. So all you have to do is turn this to true or put this whole debug into your include file and then you can debug your whole application if you wanted to. So that's pretty neat to be able to do something like that. But for the most part, that's just really dealing with the post variables that we get from the client, from the other page. We send some values up here and if things are null, we want to get rid of that and make null into the database, but we don't want it to be in the session because we do store these variables in the session. So when we go back to the user page, we can just grab it from the session instead of passing a query string back. And that's a pain. We don't want to do that. We want to just use the session and populate that. We'll talk about that in the user registration file. And then we don't want to use quotes around anything that's not an integer or anything that's going to be something like a password. We want to do something different because we're going to encrypt that password. So that's dealing with the post variables. If you continue down, you can see that we actually do validations. Validations are important and you can see that if we check for certain things that aren't going to be the right things that we need for this data that's going to be passed into the database, we're going to return to the form, resend the form, we'll look at that function, and first we just check to see if things are set. If the variables that we don't want to have empty values or that we don't want to be empty or set, we have to pass that back and say, well, you didn't fill out the required forms. If for some reason you slip past the client-side validations that we had there, then we want to check for that. And that's the same thing as we move down. We have those as the session for here, and we check to see if they're set first, and then we see if they're empty. So is set and empty are two different things. So if they're empty, 
then we also go back to the form and we'll talk about that later. And we'll also talk about this as well in the next video, dealing with the length. We want it to be a certain length and you can put these in to be what the field lengths are in the database because you don't want this to try to put too much information into the database. So we check it here. If they don't fit within certain ranges, then we go back and tell the user to fill out the proper size for the fields. And these fields here, we want to make sure they fit within a range. So these are the question fields. We don't want to get too much information. So we limit those fields to 60, which is the database size limits for those questions. So that's another way that you can validate. And that's an interesting thing that you can do. So we can continue. We're going to talk about the SQL as well as what we're going to be doing here with selections and insertions. And then we're actually going to send a mail and talk about the resent of form and what happens in the user registration as well. But this is for the most part dealing with validations. Like I said, check out those variables, add slashes when you need to so you don't have any bogus code. You can check this a lot more than what I have here. This is some good, good checking, but you could do a lot better. And also your validations, make sure the fields you want are set, make sure they're not empty, and then check for the size of those fields for certain fields that you want to limit so that you don't try to put too much data into the database which can have different results and most of those are not good.